Welcome to Drinking Bros. Put down the water and grab a fucking drink. Welcome back to the second episode of Drinking Bros. Of course, sponsored by Lead Slinger's Whiskey. And at night she cries while he rides his steeds. The first romance novel for dudes. I love saying that, Ross. Yeah. Of course, we're joined here today by Ross Patterson, Vincent Vargas, Jared Taylor himself. Oh, sorry. A.K.A. Rocco there, You're Vincent. Good, you know, I just like your name. <laughs> and uh, the douchey of himself, Mr. Matt Best. So I'm going to toss it over to you, Mr. Ross Patterson. Matt, do you, you don't give yourself enough credit. Uh, for how how big of a of a douche that you aren't. Uh, you're actually, <laughs> Wait, did he say aren't? You're, you're yeah, actually <laughs> aren't aren't with an N T at the end. You're actually a gentleman in real life, and a lot of people don't know that. And it's the holiday season, and I think people should know that. Hey, the first nine <laughs> the first ninety days that I started working with him, I always you know it was in the back of my mind: as this guy gets bigger, is 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 he going to become an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, uh, I mean, I guess we should just turn off the fucking podcast and I'll bang each other. I mean, <laughs> it's the shortest podcast in, in history. It's a 48-second podcast. That's it. And you just hear guys fucking <laughs> and it just cuts. <laughs> it just cuts uh, out. Uh. <laughs> well, if you guys aren't accustomed to the Drinking Bows podcast, we pretty much talk about everything fucked up. Um, Ross can give some more insights to that. What, what, what do we do on this show, Mr. Patterson? What we like to do on this show is we, is we like to drink a lot. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm not going to – I don't want to overcomplicate it. But we, what we do every week is start off with what we're drinking. This week I am drinking Dale's Pale Ale. It is Oscar Blues. It is from North Carolina. It is a 6.5, it says on the can here. And it's, it's from Brevard, North Carolina. Uh, Matthew, Matthew Best, what are you drinking tonight? So I'm going to go back to my roots a little bit here, but Jameson Gold Reserve, which is a hard thing to swallow because, you know, they didn't want to sponsor much. I get it, but at the end of the day, the select reserves of them are absolutely delicious. They have the Black Barrel Gold Reserve and Signature Reserve, but uh, Gold Reserve is my favorite. Um, I, I splurged and bought a bottle just for this occasion. I, I don't get it because I think all we did was bring attention to us from Jameson, and now they... They copy us. I, I recently saw <laughs> yeah. the Drinking Brothers. Dude, there's a drink- Drinking Brothers. <laughs> so, oh my God. You know, sorry to pretend before we get into what the other guys are drinking, but there literally was um, it was a, a video and a video and an ad from Jameson called Drinking Brothers, and this is about eight months after Drinking Bros that uh, the company and all the supporters have have come together as a community to do and make. Um, and we're like, you fucks, like. Oh, fuck them. In all seriousness, before I met you guys, I, I had heard the term JMO about a thousand times in this town. I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. There's, there's <laughs> a lot of military. There's a lot of military here, and I was like, oh man, I've never heard Jameson called that. And then I started watching your videos, and then I realized that you guys were the ones who actually started that. Essentially, I wouldn't say I started it. A lot of the two seven five guys out when uh, Vince and I were in Ranger Battalion, we all drank Jameson, and I, then it was that. I term, think but. that's a northeastern thing because my buddy from New Hampshire would always be, "Oh, Chad, I'm coming over. We're gonna have some Jamo, <laughs> yeah. some fucking Jam." But but let's okay. be honest, you guys you guys made it really really fucking popular. We started Jamo. <laughs> that's that's Jared's words, not mine. Um, so if you want to know what Jared's drinking, it's actually disgusting to me. So oh, you, stop! You, 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 <laughs> it's like I feel like other everybody wants to have a sense of liquor and like uh, give good advice of what we're drinking because it might be delicious. But here's Jared drinking. Listen, brown liquor gives me headaches. <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm having some sky vodka and cranberry juice. I've never seen anyone drink as much vodka as this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> he is in the Air Force. So, so. Rocco, what are you having tonight? What well, are you again, I went the traditional route with Tecate because uh, I'm Mexican as fuck. Oh, my crap. God. I'm surprised you're not pulling my weeds right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's the first oh. beer I drank that no shit I passed out. And so since then, if I see it, I buy it. You, yeah, so you drink the beer that you passed out with. I, yes. like, I like your style. Tr- hey, man, I, fashion. We go. Right. Rocco, you could have ended that story with we went to Del Taco afterwards just to, just to really fit this, <laughs> the fucking stereotype. Holy shit. Were you watching La Bamba? <laughs> Richie! <laughs> 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 
Dude, I have the worst taco story that I might tell. Matt, we, we should say that that we this is our Thanksgiving episode right oh, now. Yes. Yes. See, I see we, we get so excited, Ross, that we, we fuck up the pre For Rocco. Please, no, no, no. For, for Rocco, I think it's only fitting that we start off with a taco story on Thanksgiving week. <laughs> well, I appreciate so it. So let's this hear is... your taco story. Let's hear the taco story. So this is a Thanksgiving story. So, uh, you know, I have I have five older brothers, um, two real real brothers. They're all Marines. They're crazy guys. But anyways... We've always had a drink competition. They used to get me drunk as a kid. My brother ended up coming visiting me after I'd got out of the military in Los Angeles. And as Rocco knows, grown, born and raised in L.A., taco trucks, they're everywhere. And they're fucking delicious. So we make the fucking great idea to get fucking housed off whatever we're drinking for the night and go to a taco truck. I had $20 in my pocket. There were dollar tacos. Yes. You, you can see where this is going. I fucking love tacos. <laughs> oh, boy. This, the seams came loose, didn't they? The seams came loose. I, I couldn't stop. I was like, I was literally like, like Frodo going after the ring, but there were tacos and I was mad and I destroyed these fucking things. All 20 tacos, 20 fucking tacos myself. Damn. If, if I buy McDonald's when I'm drinking, I have fridge McDonald's for like six days. Yeah, he's <laughs> <weird. laughs> There's some poor toilet in Los Angeles right now that is still yes. crying. I'm so, uh, dude. I'm sitting here excited about this story. Please go on. No, they're they're really. It's kind of a shitty story. I just literally ate 20 tacos. Looked at my brother and I was like, "What's up, bitch?" I'm like, <laughs> dude, I fucking threw up. You everywhere. puked on your own dick. <laughs> dude, it's a good lubrication. What, what a waste of fucking good tacos. On my own dick. That's how I felt. I felt guilty. You puked on your brother and your own dick. Uh, <laughs> I did puke on my brother. Um, some got on me, and then I woke up the next morning with like like a carne asada fucking hangover. I don't know if that's like a carne Mexican asada. term, but it gets you. Is that a, is that a term, Rocket? Carne yeah, carne asada. Yeah, that's a that's a style of meat that's prepared. No, but is that like a, is that a hangover term? Like a carne asada. Uh, I've never had one of those, so I'm not sure. <laughs> that's weird. Mexican that's never had a carne asada hangover. <laughs> We'll drink some more tequila. Sounds like someone has a case of the Taco Tuesdays over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in good fashion of the drinking bros, we should uh, start this off right and do a cheers. 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 Fucking cheers. cheers. To all the drinking bros out there. Cheers. Yeah. Another oh. another night. If, you, yeah. if you've had five before 2 p.m., this is the one show that you don't have to feel guilty about it on. <laughs> but the, I don't have a taco story. I just know every time I do go to Taco Bell, I get so excited I buy like three times more than I can eat. <laughs> yeah. Dude, those fucking party packs are Whoa. so good with the Doritos oh, on a soft taco. The Dorito God, the Doritos are the best. God. You know, fucking if, Taco Bell. If, if you ever – Closely examined Mexican food. It's all a taco in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. And I, and I tell them, like people, when I, we grew up, my mom would do these, these bean marathons where oh. she would cook beans one day and put it in a tortilla, and it's a taco, and then roll it up, and it's a burrito. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> exactly. It's just rolled different. And it, then she fries it in a tostada. <laughs> and then I ate, waited a while until I realized, like, it's all the goddamn same yeah. fucking beans, thing. Beans, rice, meat, and then yeah. some form of topping. Yeah, and if you fry it and put cheese. Now you got an enchilada again. The same fucking thing. Okay, I since th- Ross, this is the thanks. Yeah, for for Thanksgiving. Th- then Rocco, is this? Yep. Does your mom make you tacos? Do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? W- what is it called there? Like, welcome, <laughs> welcome yeah. to America. Cinco de, Cinco de oh, November. We, you no, know, we definitely go more <laughs> traditional. I mean, we always have the same: the turkey, the you know, the mashed potatoes, blah 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 blah. But we we always do still have uh, tamales. Tamales are definitely a traditional tamales. thing that we have in our house. It's cultural. So what would you what do you do on Thanksgiving, Ross? What, what what's your go to? Are you a turkey guy? Ross is a frat boy. I imagine you know he has daiquiris and and, and yeah. Ross. It's, it's like, so weird. Right? <laughs> Isn't that weird? Just put on some daiquiris Dude, in with college. A, I used we're gonna to have daiquiris and play that. lacrosse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gonna wear. V-neck I was. Sweaters. I was the Abercrombie <laughs> King. I was, dude. I was hundred percent. I was the Abercrombie King. I even wore the Woods cologne. Uh, I had the, the REI, the REI boots, the whole shit. I mean, I, I'm one to talk. There are videos of me that exist wearing an upside down visor. Oh shit! So are, are <laughs> you, you used to be a car with guy. Bleach hair. That's right. You used to be a car yeah. guy, dude. He was fast and furious himself. <laughs> was he? Yeah, he was, dude. Like embarrassing. We're, we're glad he didn't go Paul Walker on us. Too yeah. soon? Is that too soon? A little too soon. We like him. Fast and Furious Seven was like my favorite. I love Paul. Walker. Hey, what what do you eat on Thanksgiving, Jared? You, I feel like you don't give a fuck as long as it has like cheese in it. You're cool. Oh yeah, I like everything. <laughs> uh, my parents, growing up, I mean, they always made a huge Thanksgiving. My mom and dad both make homemade stuff. That's my favorite because you could put homemade stuffing in everything. Yeah. yeah. In, in like 
the corn or in the ice cream. Look at his face. Or yeah, I wish you guys if you could see, see you he's could, actually drooling while talking. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could ball face. up. Yeah. Like I would ball up stuffing and then I'd put butter on it. and then uh, I'm pretty sure he's not even in the room right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After, then you freeze it and then you, you could put chocolate syrup on it and microwave it. Oh, God. It's so, yeah. <laughs> I, can he- I can hear you getting fatter over here. It's, I know. I'm all the way across the country. Dude. I can hear you getting fatter. I'm so hungry. My, uh, so my dad is actually coming into town to this uh, uh, well, this week for Thanksgiving um, depends when we're, we're we're pushing this episode because we're about a, a day or two out from Thanksgiving. But um, he's in town and he's going to make prime rib. My dad, my dad's a Vietnam veteran. He's a cool dude, uh, Marine. I, he's an inspiration to me. But he makes the bomb as prime rib. So he's like, "You want me to make a turkey?" I was like, "No, you're doing prime rib. That's great. Uh, that's not un-American. No, I, I feel like yeah. you can. I'd eat a burrito, dude. I, anything, chicken. Everybody fucks with chicken. Mean, Thanksgiving's an Indian holiday, isn't it?" What? <laughs> Why is it? Indian? This is like that Wikipedia reference. I think Wait, you which, made the last which, show. Which kind of Indian? Like feathers or yeah, red dot? The, the Puritans or pilgrims oh. and Indians. Oh. Just, just think. Think about butter, JT. Matt, I got a question for you. So your yeah. dad's a Vietnam vet. Uh, yep. Have you ever challenged him to a Thanksgiving fight? Like, has that ever gone down in your household? <laughs> you don't challenge a Vietnam vet in a fight, right? No. You know, my dad. Uh, I can't speak volumes. I mean, he's been, he was an amazing father, and he's crazy, and he was hard, and, and that's what really bred me into what I did with my life. But no, you don't. Like, I remember one time I challenged him. I was like, you can't tell me what to do. He grabbed me by my hair, like threw me off a fucking – we had this staircase in the ground. and was like, you want to fucking go? And I was like, no, I don't want to go. And I was young then, but I was like, no, I ain't going to fuck with I've got dude. a crazy story about that. So Gary O'Neill <laughs> – yeah, Gary O'Neill. stayed with me for almost six weeks. We were working on his book called so, American Warrior. Who's Gary O'Neill? So Gary O'Neill is 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 like the cream de corps, like legendary seventh group special forces guy. I, I mean, to go into his bio, just go, just Google Gary, like or get his book American Warrior. The guy was 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 doing things, you know, way before all those things were created. He's part of part of Project Blue Light, which was the essentially experimental Delta Force before Delta Force was formed. Um, okay. So, so G- Gary also helped uh, Colonel Nick Rowe write and author Seer School, the Special Forces Survival School, and Gary's specialty was Sentry Stock and Kill. So he <laughs> he was the the U.S. Army's expert on how to sneak into a base and kill all the guards. <laughs> <laughs> and and a quick tangent. Happy Thanksgiving. Into, Happy yeah, Thanksgiving. Uh, 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 he was telling me about how his first the first the, the first throat I slit, motherfucker. I had a giant British fairboard. It was it was a, it was a British bayonet, and I jammed it into that. <laughs> I can't even say how he says it. I jammed it into that VC's fucking neck, and it stuck into my wrist. And then I'm stuck there, and that VC's kicking, and I got this goddamn knife stuck in my bones, <laughs> and he's his 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 neck is just bleeding everywhere, and. Finally, I just drop him, <laughs> and then my buddy's got to stand on my hand while I pull the knife out of my bone. Like yeah. this is this is a classic Gary O'Neill story. So anyway, he's living with me for almost six weeks. We're working on his book. I did a lot of photo restoration for uh, American American Warrior, a really fun project because it was cool. As I read his book, I was able to ask him to expand every time on these stories that I was reading in the book. And one of one morning, it, we had gone out drinking. That night, uh, him and I got fucking hammered. Max Mullen was our driver, who's another retired Ranger, really cool guy. Uh, Ranger Hall of Fame, if I'm correct, right? Both of them, Ranger Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers. Um, I wake up at about 8.30. I'm coming out of my room. I'm hungover. I get hit in the face with a fucking phone book. (laughs) Yeah. And (laughs) Gary is sitting in my chair in the living room. He goes... You gotta always be ready, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. And this, so yeah. this is what you woke up to on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, you fucking bitch. <laughs> I mean, Jer- Jared was in the Air Force, so, you know, he was probably dreaming of, like, dicks and rainbows. I was dreaming, I was dreaming about Navy guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those of us in the Air Force do. We just wish we were in the Navy. <laughs> That's fucking. Hilarious. Jeez, the being above for like. God, six I just months. want to be locked up with them, dude. <laughs> Jared, how, how like what's your average weight that you throw on a Thanksgiving week? Because let, let's nobody really works on Mondays, so you're, you you kind of have the week off. Is it is it over under twelve pounds? Be real. Well, ever since ever since I left the TACP schoolhouse teaching for the Air Force, I 
The Tacby Schoolhouse just burned me out on working out, if that means anything. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I feel like Jared was? So Jared's like, he's like this filled water balloon where you're like, yeah, man, he's, he's looking good. That's what a water balloon should look like. And then he got out of the military and he was like, I stopped putting water in that. Someone, put, pop. Milk. Someone <laughs> put milk. Someone put milk in the balloon. No, yeah. here's the it's amazing like, thing about Jared, stretching. though. The amazing thing that this motherfucker can do is he can drop 10 pounds in a fucking week if he wanted to. And it's, like, ridiculous. Like, that was for Range 15. We all thought it was a yeah. joke. And he was, like, he had this, he bought a scale and every fucking four days was dropping, like, four to five pounds. Yeah, right? it's insane. And, and the funny thing is, like, he only has, like, one PT test a year. He only runs <laughs> one week before. And he, he, I went with him to go buy these shoes, and he buys these shoes, and that day he goes and runs, like, three miles. And then he goes, I'm good. I'll pass the test. <laughs> he shows up and passes the fucking test. So, so normally when I start the train up for the PT test, I do, like, a solid 16 and a half minute, mile and a half. And then I run for four days, and I can knock it down to about 10, 20. <laughs> Insane. It's weird. weird. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm not a big cardio guy anymore. Uh, I'm, I'd be I'd be lucky to break that 10 20 with you. I think. I, I think once you hit 25, I was thinking about this for a video skit. I was like, once you hit 25, you're kind of just like, I'm good. Yeah. Especially if you're in the military, you're like fucking good, dude. I ran fucking six to eight miles every fucking morning for PT. Like I am, I'm good. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna lift weights, you know. I mean, look, I gotta, big, no, look at Big get, Poppy. I'll yeah. Get, I'm gonna get cut up for. Uh, I'll go back down to like 185 for the premiere because I'm gonna wear mess dress to the premiere, oh, and I can't God. look like a fucking douche in mess dress. Oh, dude, look, please wear, fucking... please wear the Caitlyn Jenner dress to the Range 15 premiere. Please. <laughs> no mess dress, Ross. That is your your formal uniform attire with Are all you your gonna? fancy. Are you really? Should I do the same? Oh, fuck yeah. Should I do the same? Yeah, dude. It's a win for the for the Air Force for me. I'm down. I'll do it. It's a movie premiere in mess dress. I'm I got down. The, I got that V. There is, there is no way. I, do, I got out when I stubbed fucking greens. I was like 180 pounds. I'm 210 pounds now. I could There's probably no do it. Way. I could probably do it. I just got to – I do, I have a PT test next next month, dude. I'm a little nervous about it. I'm not, I'm not shaving my beard. You have, you have to shave your beard, though. Yeah, I have to shave my beard. We, you're like That's five fine. We all, it's we it's all a baby good. beard. Yeah. Whatever. Rocco, I got a, qu- a couple questions for you, by the way. Are yeah. you going back in? Was that true on Instagram? Well, I are think you, are you just going to reenlist? Kind of, uh, several people sent me the same thing. I, I didn't say I was going to reenlist in the military. I'm going to reinstate in the Border Patrol. Uh, it takes some time. I put the paperwork in for the that just in case. But uh, again, you know, by then the movie goes out and things change. This podcast kind of blows up. Uh, I'll probably deny it. It's just – it's one of those, man, having kids, I always put on that, that plan A, B, C, D all the way through Z, and that's just one of my – Yeah, ideas. it doesn't matter, I think, how much money we we can attain for ourselves in all of our endeavors in the next year. I'm still going to stay in the guard. Right. Uh, just because you, you – That's something I wanted to ask you guys was – because I, I know Jared's still in, and I know, you know – uh, Rocco is is talking about going back to Border Patrol. Is it be, is it because you? No, he's still in no, the reserve. No, yeah, still in the reserves as well. So yeah. yeah. So with the interesting part of our company with Article 15 clothing, it's you have Vince is still a reservist. You have Jared who's guard. Um, you have I, I, I can mention them by name. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, Co- Cody uh, who is still active duty who just got back from a deployment in Korea. So congrats, Cody. Or a Korea tour. Korea tour. tour. We yeah. don't want to insult the people actually deploying yeah. that, Cody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're um, in Korea eating kimchi, bitch. <laughs> and then we have uh, Zach Buckaloo who um, is also in the guard. Yeah. And then uh, the only people that are completely civilians at this point are myself and Brad uh, who's, um, you know, are – does a lot of cool shit for for all the things we run. So a lot of the guys are still serving. Four out of the six are serving. And uh, I, I think what your question was, Ross, is if what is – Vince was talking about the Border Patrol because he had a federal job and a lot of other stuff. And it's – you know, when you get out of those kind of jobs, it's hard to not want to go back, especially yeah. – you know, Vince's got a big family. He's a family man. He's a fucking great dude, and he just wants to make sure that there's not a contingency plan, but a treasury plan to ensuring that the his family's taken care of. Yeah, because a, a lot of people, correct. you know, who are fans of, of of you guys or supporters of you guys, come up to me all the time, and they're like, "Oh man, I, I think all they do, they're just rich and they make internet videos all day." And I was like, "No, I, I, like they that <laughs> they, they love what they do for for you know." A living and and uh, they're very serious about it, which I think people would be surprised surprised to know. So I, I won't get into the whole story, not to not to over what's that wrong? Oh, here, not to talk too much on this subject, but uh, a lot of people don't know when we first started the company. When I first met Jared, I was making YouTube videos. I was um, I got out of the military and I started doing contracting for um, in OGA 
And then, uh, so from there, I just started... (laughs) Anyways, uh, we were having fun. I started making that. I I didn't quit that job until... When did I quit? July of 2014. No, no, 15. Yeah, 15. I quit this year. No, this year, yeah. Yeah, It was July. So I was still deploying usually about seven to eight months out of the year until this summer of 2015. Um, and a lot of people always think, yeah, there must be rich and stuff. Like we, we have our fun, but at the end of the day, like we, we want to bring entertainment. That's what yeah. we're about. Yeah. No, we and still have bills. Dude. It doesn't come without <laughs> work too. I got I mean, this alcohol yeah. problem. Bro. Uh, <laughs> my big thing, Ross, though, is as we, as we slowly climb this ladder in Hollywood, to me, staying in the guard just gives me really good shit talking material to <laughs> a lot of these snooty uppity. The one thing that I hate most in the world is is bad people like dudes that are just that are just you know full of themselves and stuff like 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 when it comes down like to Matt it, Beth. no 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 I <laughs> mean like these, some of these <laughs> some of these Hollywood guys that have done nothing but sit on a set their whole life and they always want to spark their opinion about different issues and stuff like that like wait until we rise up to that and it's like hey you're a, you're a bitch. Like, what are they going to say back? Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're, they're, it's like, well, let me see who, what you're all about. And they go in our background like, well, fuck, oh, these guys fuck. legit. I can't. Like, oh, they, we, they have, there's no room for anyone to talk shit when you have a legitimate background. There's only four words you have to say is, I was in war. And then that's it. That ends it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ross. So a birdie on my shoulder told me that you might be growing a mustache. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What? Another one? I, I can't confirm one the rumor. I was not eating in entire uh, bag of Oreos for Thanksgiving. I, I really, I am growing a mustache. Uh, my lady asked me, are, are you growing a mustache for, for Movember for prostate cancer? I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know that was a thing, but I am now. So I want everybody to get their assholes checked um, <laughs> and, and be serious about yeah. it. Uh, listen, outstanding. listen, I'm a goddamn man. I grow a fucking mustache every day of the year. Yeah. We yeah. actually do this thing in our company where we check each other's assholes. <laughs> I don't think that's like that. That has nothing to do with medical. Yeah. No. No. It's more a game. Well, it's, it's always medical when I do it because I'm a medic. But oh, you're just sure. gay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's like watching TV, black and white TV. Yeah. No. No. I'm mad. A, a, a secret about me that nobody knows is after every movie, I like. I enjoy getting DiCaprio fat. Uh, I grow a mustache. I grow my hair out. <laughs> I go and sit and edit for for usually three months. No one sees me. I put up like old TBTs of myself, like when I when I look sweet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you backlog you backlog oh, like, dude, sexy I, I photos. Sch- of I you. schedule all my Facebook so- posts so that it was like, oh shit, man, he looks awesome. <laughs> Once the movie comes out, like Range Fifteen, it lives forever, and you can't go back and you can't change it uh, to. For an independent film, you can't CGI and make yourself skinnier. So for every movie I've done in my career, I, sl- I slim down as hard as I can and then literally just go on a DiCaprio bender. Hey, real quick, Ross, for maybe some of the people that don't – maybe some of the people that don't know that are listening about Ross Patterson, what are some of the movies yes, that uh, you Yes, know, so I got, I got my start in teen movies. Uh, one of my first ones was a movie called The New Guy. Which is uh, long celebrated. That movie is on every yes. goddamn day of the year. Uh, love it. Love that movie, by the way. One love of the funnest that. I've, I've, I've ever had to shoot. We shot on the yeah. University of Texas campus. I was 23 years old. You can fill in the rest of the blanks on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> accepted. <laughs> it, accepted was another one. Accepted with uh, Jonah Hill, Justin uh, Long, Damon. Blake Lively, uh, Kellen Lutz in them. Yes. Uh, and there was a string of those, and then uh, I opened up my own company, Street Justice Films, about six years ago. We've we've done eight films out of there, including Range 15 that comes out next summer, uh, and then uh, Helen Keller versus Night Wolves, which came out on on Halloween, and uh, it, it, it it's yeah, which which stars you guys. You guys have a huge cameo in the movie. Well, well actually, well now that now that it's Thanksgiving. Uh, Helen Keller is. I mean, I'm not going to drop the the awesome accolade. This is this is his number two TMZ movie. It, re- it really yeah, is. It really is. I, I I dropped it free around the world, available on every device and outlet you can imagine. Uh, so it's free. Boom. It's free on YouTube. It is. Uh, there was a, a Vimeo link on my fan page. Uh, it it is actually on Facebook, split into two parts because Facebook will only let you upload 45 minutes. So it will be on the Helen Keller versus Nightwolves fan page. And every fan around the world is allowed to do whatever they want with it. Chop it up, put it on Instagram, Vine, Facebook, Twitter, anything they want to do with the movie, they can. 
I uh, I make these movies for the fans. I, I I gotta say, Ross, that's fucking awesome, man. I think a lot of people don't see how much work goes in this. We were on set for one day. We made a quick cameo in the movie, um, but golly, man, that's really freaking rad that you you did that. And I'm not I'm not even just saying that for a podcast. It, it's legit because you could hunt down money you could get, but then it's like you know made a, made a little bit of what I could, um, and then I'm just gonna fucking I let people, people enjoy to it. See it. I, I want, want people, people to see it. it. Yeah, yeah. That's cool entertainment. Thing. That's what the, th- that's what that's what. Ultimately, all these films is about because a lot of people ask me why why I did Range Fifteen. It was like one, I believe in you guys, and I think you guys are amazing. Hey, let me let me interject you right here because I want to I want to tell this part of the story. I was very very reluctant or reserved to send you that script because I just I assumed a guy like yourself, or a guy in in the Hollywood scene, that's all he ever hears. Hey man, I really want it. I really got this script. I need you to take a look at. And I find that day I just sent you that message. Hey, we're going to do this. Would love to hear your input. Could you tell me what you think? And I honestly, in my head, I expected not to hear from you for three, you know, three, three weeks or so. And 24 hours later, you came back and had read the whole thing. And I was like floored because at that point you and I weren't friends at all. Like I, I had, I had talked to you a couple times in a professional manner So, I mean, to go to you like that was like I was terrified. (laughs) (laughs) The honest story of that, Jared, was I had seen your videos because you'd sent me a link to all your videos. I thought your videos were really fucking funny. And you guys were all military. And I was like, fuck, if I don't – because I get get about 10 to to 15 scripts a day from people. I was like, man, if I don't read the fucking military guy's script, like I'm the biggest cocksucker on the planet. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, not that cock sucking is bad, but you'd be a complete ass. Because I, 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 cause <laughs> I, I breezed through your social media numbers, and I was like, "Oh fuck, they could just they could just go out and say Ross Patterson hates the military." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I read the scripts uh, immediately. I thought you were really fucking cool first and foremost, and then I, more, most importantly, when I read the script, I was like, "You know, there's something there, but I think these guys need to do it in their own voice." Then I gave the script back to you guys, you know, and said, hey, let's get together. We ended up rewriting it. Uh, but in no way, shape, or form did I think that fucking movie would get me. <laughs> I really that is the God's honest truth. I would have asked for a shit ton of points on the back end. I totally didn't. And I'm going to beef this one. <laughs> this thing's going to make so much fucking money. And it's like, I, 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 yeah. Uh, dude, I just want, I, dude, I just want people to laugh. Like, honestly, I fucking That's- every day. We had this conversation yesterday, Ross, when you called me. I was like, I just want fucking people to laugh. Like, I, it's fucked up when you when you write the movie with everybody else collectively. We all did it together. We, we produce it, then we act in it, and then we're gonna have a part in post. But you still want to fucking watch Dude, the end that, product? That's insane. I can't think of a YouTube skit I've ever done that I feel that way about. That gets lost in in movie in, in the making of movies. And, and again, which is why I gave Helen Keller away. Which is why I helped you guys with Range Fifteen. Is it? I, I genuinely love film and I love comedies. There aren't enough in this world, and I hope by next Thanksgiving, everybody is is sitting around with their family, with their friends, getting fucked up, drinking, eating, and then watching Range Fifteen and laughing as much as we laugh together in real life. It's it's funny because I keep getting asked uh, what my what my favorite part about the whole experience was, and uh, it was the 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 greatest the greatest part of of this whole thing was when we were in the Oval Office and it was me and Jesse and we did our thing and and towards the end of that scene, I'm supposed to exit. And when I came around that corner and saw one guy on the floor and Jesus crying... Like that was the coolest fucking. Thing. Yeah, and, and by the way, I and should not, preface not, this not by saying not, not the actual Christ, but uh, Jesus Hernandez, yeah, exactly. our director <laughs> yeah, yeah, of photography, yeah, yeah. and yeah, Jesse yeah. Wiseman, the 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 actress <laughs> in the scene. Um, yeah, you guys crushed it, and and again, this is what movies should be about. You know, I love this film, Ross, but I have to I have to bring one thing up. Apparently, uh, Teletubby Jared is planning a trip to Costa Rica. Oh, damn it. Why do I Did you hear about this? So there's a rumor, Jared. Yeah, let's let's dive into this. He comes out to me the other day and he's like, "I'm gonna fly to Costa Rica with Evan <laughs> to, to fucking like film commercials for coffee." Dude, I was this like, is I let's know, really first dive time into I'm this like like Greg yeah. Luganis. Let's dive in like Luganis and understand. <laughs> Costa, Rica. you're going to Costa Rica for the first the first week of December with with Evan uh, to shoot coffee commercials. Is that, is that correct? 
Are you kidding me? Are you bringing a no, gun? No. <laughs> so, so we buy the beans for Black Rifle Coffee from a, a farm in Costa Rica. Uh, I know. So you. the premise behind these commercials are: is Evan and I will be dressed entirely in white suits, like Miami Vice. <laughs> we will, the Jesus whole thing. Christ. The whole thing is wrapped around that Evan and I are obsessed with having our image be that we are these giant drug cartels, and we keep we keep calling the police and the DEA on ourselves, and they keep reminding us that. Exporting coffee is perfectly legal. You guys leave us alone. <laughs> you like, you fuck, guys like fuck. want to be legit like, cartel members. Yeah. But, like, so we keep framing ourselves. Yeah. So we get arrested, and then like, during all these yeah. interrogations, like <laughs> it just keeps coming out. Like you guys just sell coffee. There, it's the, legal. You call yeah. You call I'm in your, love with the gold. Go- no, no. Like I co- imagine co- you, you guys. Like you guys call the cops in your cell saying, "Hey, that that vehicle's loaded." And they, they pull you over and they open the trunk and it's coffee beans. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're like, wait, we're there holding yeah, yeah. our wrists out, waiting to get, like, we've got uh, a plane. You, you got me, copper. We've, we've, <laughs> we've got a grass airfield reserved with a plane. Like, like so we call the cops, and Evan and I are transferring bags It reminds the plane. me of the movie like, Blow. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But legal. Yeah, but, but it's all legal. It's like, like, sort of identification. He pulls out a federal ID. They're like, what? You're, you're uh, fine. Fuck off. It's dude. like an American passport. Yeah. Like, all right, that checks out. Wait, where are you going? Don't you want to take us in? Like, no, you guys just had coffee and you had passports. You're good. Like, <laughs> so, Jared, my, my wow, biggest no. question would be, couldn't you shoot that here and pretend you're in Costa Rica? Or, or are you going to Costa Rica <laughs> to fucking that's party? Yeah, but that's Dude, not I, moved, what Jared I just does. moved into a new house. I'm like, I can't fucking go. And he's like, we're going to Costa Rica. And that's Jared, though. You that's know, what I, Jared does. It's, it's a conversation that Rocco had and I had was about pretty much uh, he's – it's like not. I don't. How, how do we do it? It's like the smartest man you've ever met, and yeah. then like the weirdest dude you've yeah. ever met. But like he couldn't have one or the other. Yeah. Because if you're middle, of the how road, did that conversation go with your pregnant wife? <laughs> What's it? <laughs> so well, I'm actually, going to Costa Rica. She, she just uh, she goes she goes. Are you traveling at all in December? I go Costa Rica first week of December, and she's like. Oh, okay, cool. Like she doesn't even ask questions. I think she's used. She's to it. so <laughs> used to it. I'm not even gonna out of out of. By the way, out of out of the whole group, Jared, you do travel more than more than like you're, it's like you're a stand up comedian from the '80s. You were literally in an, <laughs> in another city every I, I, fucking I, I day. I recently put a stop on that from me. I was like, I am sick of flying two times a week yeah. to go do shit. But we'll let Jared do that. Rock and yeah. I will sit back and. Uh, you know, make new videos. We're uploading one in probably about two days. Yeah. That's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, that's awesome. That is fucking... <laughs> it's literally your dick, like, zoomed yeah, into them. I'm, I'm, I'm on the road Rough. just meeting people. That's what I do. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what, that's what Jared's amazing at. He, he can network with anyone. He can talk to anyone. Uh, he might be inappropriate at times, but for some reason they all fall in love anyway when he talks about shoving things up his penis. So... I, as soon as you tell somebody that you, you're going to shove a D cell battery through your your your, your urethra, they fucking yes, go nuts. They were like, today. "Oh shit, I really that's, dig that guy." That's his line. Yeah, they're like, "I wish we weren't revealing it right now." <laughs> I know because we I just know. we just exposed him, but it, that line them. works with everyone. It's the icebreaker. <laughs> it's like, what does the fat pen when? Yeah, yeah, what does the fat pen would say? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he goes, "Here to break hey, the ice." You ever stick a C cell battery up your dickhole? No, no you oh, gotta yeah. you gotta play it off as like. Like how I do it is like, oh man, I choked. I choked on three pints of sour cream the other day. <laughs> what? How are you drinking three pints of sour cream? Because it's good. What's wrong with you? There you go. <laughs> but Jared, I remember in LA, you 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 said the D cell battery to, to to somebody overhearing, and then you walk, you just walked away and left me with that conversation. And the guy looks at me. <laughs> the, the guy looks That's at me. That's it. That's the icebreaker. The, the guy looks at me and it's gonna, it's like, wait, 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 wait. in a total he's, LA he's, way, and he goes, he goes, oh. You know that, that I dig that guy's spirit. It was like, what fucking spirit? Like he's talking about shoving a D cell battery on <laughs> <up> his <again. laughs> This is how you say it. <laughs> what fucking spirit does he have? Like that's a D. He just talked about a D cell. <laughs> oh no, I dig his spirit, man. What fu- what no, fucking he's got spirit? a spirit animal. It's a fucking unicorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's another rumor I heard, by the way, uh, that Matt, you moved into mm. a gated community. Is it? Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 is he really? <laughs> you rich motherfucker. You moved into a gated community. So you roll up, just tatted as fuck, and you're like, hi. It's No, it's Mr. Best. Yep. Can you can you buzz me through? Is, that, is, this, you, you know, is this a true uh, thing? Th- so you also... 
Yeah, what you didn't hear, Ross, that the neighbors already moved out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's living in the gated community by himself right now. How how is that? I feel like it's such a diss portrayal of of how I actually live. Yeah, I know I, I changed house. No, but it, it, it is El Paso. Look, it is El Paso. Uh, yeah. A lot of people out there. So it, that so that gated community is still only thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, rent a month. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. And here's the other thing: the gate never closed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about time to get ready to do the outro for Drinking Bros, man. We we love you guys. And uh, wait, one thing first. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, Cheers. Cheers. Go. Cheers. We've got one thing we got to do before we leave. we got to name our Drinking Bro of the Week. Yes. Okay. So um, I actually picked this week's Drinking Bro. And it's uh, someone that has been awesome. Actually, to all of us and just fucking a leader in the community, Mary Dagg. Hell yeah. Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. She's an admin, too. Yeah. That's outstanding. So I got to pick this week's. And uh, uh, Mary Dave, if you don't know, she is an EOD tech. Um, lost a couple limbs um, doing some crazy shit. But she's a close friend of the group. She's an inspiration. She She's she's one of those girls that just never quits. And real quick, Ross. How we met her is we were all sitting in the office. And a female came through when we were running the Mystery Shirt campaign. And had bought eight. Yes. Oh, and it was like two in every size. So if you if you buy something, you have to put in your phone number. So we call her. We're like, hey, I mean, you just bought eight of these shirts. We're going to tell you right now, it is a horse with a giant fucking boner. And yeah. she goes, oh, fuck yeah. You're kidding. We, it was the meat pony shirt? It was the meat pony shirt? This is how we met Mary. Yeah. Yes. It she was bought crazy. eight meat pony shirts. And she was like, she, well, she, her answer was, and she's on speakerphone yeah. with all of us. She goes, well, I just wasn't sure how it fit, and I wanted to make sure that it fit if I got it. So I just got two of every size. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then as soon as she found out what it was, she was like, I kind of wish I ordered more. And she, <laughs> she, back and she ordered more. Yes. Oh, she ordered for our friend, her unit. I, for all her friends. The guys in her unit. Uh, and then she, and, and we looked her up, and we we're like, oh, God. This girl's an EOD tech that lost both her arms. Yeah, dude, like, yeah. Legit. legit badass. Like, <laughs> not not like, oh, she's like, oh, that's cool. But like, legit badass. No so. way. That's how we met Mary yeah. This girl gets cooler and cooler with every fucking story you guys tell. She's also in Range 15, by the way. <laughs> yeah. and she's... I, I've already seen the edit. She's fucking hilarious in the movie. Vice is doing a huge piece on her. And, and even they were like, Jesus Christ, she that's the coolest it. girl in the world. Like, it, there is nobody cooler yeah. than Mary Digg. All right, guys. So that's our drinking bro of the week, Mary Dig. We we love her. She's awesome. Yeah, and right. as we go forward, we want to meet some new people and some new inspirations in the world. But uh, Ross, take us take us home. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys, and listening. More like because you're not watching shit. So to Ross Patterson. Yes. Please end us. Thank you, drinking bros. Uh, have a stiff one on us. Keep a stiff one on you. And oh man, that sounds God, that sounds really erotic, doesn't it? Uh, cheers! I like stiff things, though. Yeah? Cheers, everyone! Cheers, everyone! And thank you so much. I hope everybody had a thanks- happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone! Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, guys.